There we go. It's being recorded. All right. So welcome, everyone. You've been muted, and uh, we have put you in broadcast mode. Uh, I'm going to uh, now start our conference. Over to you, Bob. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, we appreciate it very much that you're taking the time out of your schedules this evening. Um, <clears throat> this uh, presentation is originally aimed primarily for central region commissioners, but we've uh, decided that we wanted to welcome everybody from across the country if they decided that they wanted to join in on what we were doing. So there we are. Um, so welcome to uh, one and all, and uh, especially we'll say our out of region guests. Um, one of the notes here I want to make a little bit about housekeeping is we're going to ask folks to send us questions as we go through the evening. Uh, my name is Bob Hoffmeyer. I'm the top one there shown on your list of participants. And Rick is the other gentleman that will be introduced in a moment. He's, since he's running the webinar, he's actually logged in as the second person, which is Deborah Kendrew. So for this evening, for the purposes of sending Rick a question, you'll be using the Deborah Kendrew name. Um, so Rick, why don't we jump back, do the introductions uh, if you think we need to do them, and uh, then we'll move on. Well, thank you, Bob. And for the benefit of those that haven't had the pleasure of meeting Bob, hopefully you've heard his voice and it sounds familiar because he is the voice of Mr. Tools Training and all those wonderful videos that he has uh, slaved over to get made for us. Uh, Bob right now is uh, also an assistant area commissioner in the central region area six, but the reason why he's here today is because he has been uh, since the ground floor of this project, uh, one of the key team members on the Commissioner Tools Focus Group. And as Bob said, I'm Rick Hillenbrand. Um, presently, I'm also one of the half a dozen folks that are Tico's uh, direct support as a National Commissioner Support Staff member. And uh, I, too, have been involved with Commissioner Tools since uh, the very get-go. And uh, that's why we are here today not uh, counting all the fact that we bring a, a whole host of experience with us, like most of us do, that are related to either our scouting experiences or professional experiences. And uh, Ben, as a final reminder, I would like to let you know that tonight uh, the part of Deborah Kendrew is being played by Rick. So don't look for my name if you're going to send the note. And uh, I will tell you that I can't see the notes while we're making this presentation because I'm actually running the slideshow, and I can't do both simultaneously. So if you have a note you want to send, uh, it would be best to do that to Bob while the presentation is running. So back to you, Bob. All right. Thanks, Rick. Um, so as he mentioned, uh, you can send us questions as we go. If you look at the list of participants, if you just move your mouse up over our names and right-click, it'll, it'll uh, pop up a, a uh, window that gives you the ability to send questions. So. Uh, you can do that. Send private note, I believe, is what it's called. So as we go through that, you'll have the ability to ask those questions. Uh, we'll answer what we can, but most likely we're going to have to hold off till the very end when we can answer all the questions. Uh, we do have 10 to 15 minutes allotted at the end where we will have open questions uh, from everybody where we will ask you to uh, send us any questions that you've been holding back on to uh, maybe see that you're, you'll have them answered. So also at the very end, we will have a slide up that shows all the email addresses and the website addresses from everything that we discussed so that you'll have the opportunity to uh, make a note of that. So that'll be the very last slide that'll be sitting there for you. We're also planning to be very careful and considerate of the time we've committed to have this over in an hour, and that's definitely going to be our goal. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so we're going to get moving uh, real quick, and we've got a, a ton of things. So, Rick, let's go to the next one. So, tonight's topics <coughs> that we're going to talk about is why are we here, what's in it for me, why Commissioner Tools was created, training for your commissioners, discussion of simple versus detailed assessments, intermediate versus collaborative assessments, how to engage the unit key three, and uh, more topics, even what is the unit service plan and how is it created, what to do with the unit service plan once it is created, reports, what to do with them, and perhaps where the rubber meets the road, we'll say what are the next steps, as well as then we'll talk resources and assistance. 
<coughs> so, so, thank you. So all councils now have nationwide adopted commissioner tools, and that occurred no later than May of this year. And that was beyond just entering information and trudging through the process that makes us feel like we're bean counters. Um, the question that happens then is, what should we do next? So for a bit of perspective, let's start with a quick review of why we're here. The same question we can always ask about anything we do for scouting. Now, keeping in mind the big picture question, the unit commissioners are here to better serve more youth through scouting. The act of logging a contact should be motivated by a desire to document some actionable form of commissioner service to the unit and not to drive the needle on some indicator to achieve the next higher level in JTE. We are about service. With this webinar being specifically about commissioner tools, our focus will be more defined as we speak specifically about that. So Bob, what do we do now? What do we do now? So <clears throat> to answer the questions of what do we do now, let's uh, make sure we all have the same understanding about commissioner tools as we do as we review some of the basics. So Commissioner Tools is just one of the resources we can use to accomplish the goal of serving more youth through scouting. That's always the underlying purpose of why we're here. You might say that's the acid test. Um, so Commissioner Tools gives us a better system of creating a very specific customized plan to support the unit in a very fast and easy method to support that plan where we can easily monitor the health of our units with a quick glance while we also are supporting our commissioners, our administrative commissioners as they go about the role of coaching and mentoring their commissioners. We're also able to track roundtable programs, monitor commissioner activity, support journey, ex journey to excellence, and a whole lot more. So first, let's start uh, talking about how this fits into what do we do now. So first off, we talk about what's in it for me and the the first thing we want to talk about is uh, realize that Commissioner Tools is far removed from the narrowly focused unit visit tracking system. It's not UVTS. Commissioner Tools gives us resources that we have not had in the past, making it much easier to deliver the promise of improved unit service. With Commissioner Tools, it's much easier to create useful, and the important part here is actionable information, more focused, faster than previous methods, particularly like UVTS. And for those of you who are not certain that the Commissioner Tools system is faster, consider that it has 10 times the number of data fields per entry compared to UVTS. This also gives us a lot of what becomes usable information available in a very timely, near live manner. Again, we contrast this with what it used to take us to get information from our district executives or registrars or whoever the case would be. It would be someone other than where we can just get it directly out of the system. So when we would need information about training status or a unit membership roster, those things would just take us a long time to get and were difficult to do. So when we use Commissioner Tools as it's designed, we are able to deliver a very customized action plan for improvement that also includes a very, very important feature that we haven't had before, and that is the buy-in of the unit key three. And that big, that buy-in is a big part of what's in it for me so that we can now deliver more effectively the promise of improving unit service much easier, faster, simpler, and bottom line, more effective. So. That's a big, big, big reason of what's in it for me. Well, Bob, if I could, I'd like to add a side <coughs> here if I could. Preemptively, I'd like to discuss a couple of related what's in it for me items. Like any computer program, I'm sure there are a few of you out there who have been frustrated at times with commissioner tools, whether it's due to system performance, and let's include your end of the process, because at times there are people who are still trying to use a a Windows 97 machine running on a 286 processor or do a bug in the system. If you have a problem, please don't sit on it. Let your council tools champion know so they can help you if they can. Or failing that, reach out to the Commissioner Tools focus group team at commissionertools.scouting.org. And as Bob said, we'll put that email up at the end again. 
you might have found a problem that nobody else has seen. For example, we had one council that could not get their reports to run. Well, it turned out that someone made a contact entry error and entered a three-digit year. We still don't know how they did that, and it was a very unique problem. But it was causing the system to hang up just when those reports were being run for that council that included that data field. So we're also obviously trying to figure out how they did that so we can design a way to prevent that from happening again. But as another example, there was a single district in a council, just one district, where the commissioner list was not loading. But it was loading in every other district. And without the help of those commissioners, you know, we couldn't identify and were unaware of those issues. You know, we have nearly 300 councils out there. So trust me, and I know those are famous words, when I say the commissioner tools focus group and the developers are very responsive. Once the one council identified that they couldn't run those reports, the developers worked across a weekend to find out what was the cause of the problem. And this system was created to serve you. And it can only be as good as you help us make it. So we want your comments and we want your feedback. So with that, let's move on to why Commissioner Tools was created. Commissioner Tools makes it easier to help our units while at the same time offering much more in the way of unit support, commissioner support, resources, information, and much more. In turn, this will speed and simplify improving unit service and supports the four functions of commissioning and helps us move away from appearing to just be bean counters. UBTS was essentially an input system where Commissioner Tools has input, but lots of output as well. Now, JTE is great, but it only measures what we have done. The unit service plan that is created using a collaborative detailed assessment is a plan to get a unit to where it wants to be. So, Bob, what about training? All right, uh, for training, so we one of the steps for the what now would be that we want to be sure you're training your commissioners. And obviously, uh, we want everyone to be trained well, but specifically, we need to know that, or they need to know about the benefits and the values of commissioner tools, not just how to make entries. If commissioner tools is treated as an entry only system, like we've had in the past, then realistically, we'll have just what we've had in the past, which is UVTS. And I don't think anybody wants to turn back the clock and go to UVTS. So if we treat Commissioner Tools as only an entry system and we don't really understand and train the value of it, we're still going to be stuck with that, that dog of a system that we've had in the past. So the more you understand about Commissioner Tools and the more you educate and train your commissioners about it, the less it's going to seem like it's just an exercise in making reports and in us being bean counters and clicking boxes off so that we can say we've done this or we've done that, and in turn really not provided the service that we're trying to get to. So let's take this training and break it into two different categories. We'll have the initial and the beyond the basics training. So the, for the initial training, this is just a, a typical, very brief plan of what you could do. Every situation is going to be a little different, but this is just one that we're laying out here. The first thing you would want to do as part of this training is verify that the, your folks are, ver are registered as commissioners. If they're not registered as commissioners, that's a big reason people can't log into my.scouting.org and in turn commissioner tools. So they're not going to be able to use the system if they're not registered. So once you've verified that, you want to try to help them log into the my.scouting.org site and review their profile to make sure that it is in fact correct. And then very important, take a brief tour of the Commissioner Tools system with them and show them where some of this is. You might even let them navigate through it while you're looking over their shoulder. This is uh, also a very nice, tidy little package that you could use at your monthly district commissioner meetings to use as a training session. It can be done in just a few minutes and have all of your commissioners bring in laptops if they choose, and if you have internet access, it's a nice place to get that taken care of. Another step that you can use for this initial training is to utilize the videos that we've talked about and that are all available on the website. It helps them to understand the different parts of commissioner tools and how they all relate to each other 
and most importantly, how they reconnect to helping us help our units. Another big part of this is that we want to be sure that you're establishing accountability and expectations. If you don't establish those, then your commissioners are probably not going to use the system. And the commissioner tools process is an extremely beneficial and worthwhile process to go through. This is how we deliver 21st century commissioning and unit service. So very important to be sure you're establishing some accountability and expectations for that usage. And then uh, as much as anything, it's very important, we want to follow up on that comprehension and usage to make sure that they're in fact understanding what they're doing and how it fits into the big picture, as well as are they in fact making those entries. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, accountability and expectations can include such things as the ADC setting a plan for all of the unit commissioners to have significant contacts with each unit that they are assigned to, for instance, in the next month, and to be sure that it's entered in commissioner tools. It may also include making an intermediate assessment prior to scheduling collaborative assessments over the next however many months, two months, three months, whatever your case is. But as, I, uh, as I'm hoping all the councils are already are, are on commissioner tools, so I'm hoping that this is already happening or will be happening as soon as possible as new commissioners are oriented to the process. So that's the initial training. So let's talk about the beyond the basics training. Again, this is continuing training that might be occurring on a monthly basis or as you have the opportunity, but it's always a good opportunity to try to help everybody learn a little bit more. One of the, the big gold mines that you can, can dig into here deeper is the data that's found in the reports, and we'll talk, Rick will talk about those more in a couple of minutes. Very important to build strong key three relationships as we go through the process of explaining and the value of detailed assessments with uh, uh, collaborative assessments. That's critical that we have a good relationship. We also want to be looking at the goals that are being defined in the unit service plan. As part of our beyond the basics, we hope that maybe the, the goals will start being a little better defined and more specific and more, uh, more of a stretch goal in some cases. So look at those goals and see if you can maybe start tweaking those up a little bit. There's also an area that's called the Commissioner Administration Area found on the homepage at my.scouting.org. That's a great place to use for additional training. The roundtable tab is something we don't want anyone to forget about. Go in, start using that more, looking to try to improve unit attendance at roundtables and communication and all of that's going to help our units. And then as a continuation of the, the initial training, we, it's great to follow up on their comprehension and usage. And again, this is where those coaching and mentoring skills come in as ADCs or DCs. Uh, so you can tell your folks to do that and, and encourage them. So there are many different ways, though, that we can have beyond the basic training that can take place, but this is just a simple example of it. You need to determine specific needs for your councils and districts and exactly what needs to happen. But the most important thing is you need to create some kind of a plan to address those needs. So uh, that would be the idea behind the same way as we do our unit service plans for our customized tailored looks at how we can support our units. So as I mentioned previously here, the simple and the detailed assessments are another idea, though, that we can use of what's next, that we want to utilize those for because uh, the, they're in the system. And this is the two main ways that we start delivering the unit service plan. So the two types, as I've said, are the simple and the detailed. And <coughs> excuse me. They help us uh, do a lot of different things that we haven't had in the past. It all fits together nicely. The simple assessment is truly that. It's just a simple, very brief, fast write-up from a commissioner who's had a significant contact with a unit. Remember that this contact doesn't have to be for a unit that they're assigned to either. We've all had those instances perhaps where we've had a, a meaningful contact and thought that we probably should get that info logged. So this is the opportunity to do that. Early on, Rick did a test uh, as the system was going uh, live and working. 
and he calculated that you could very easily make a simple assessment entry in under 90 seconds, and that bears out still. Simple assessment is important, but the principal purposes of it, if twofold will say, is to help us establish a current snapshot of the unit's health at that exact moment, as well as the important part, the other important part, supports the unit service plan that will be created with the unit key three. We'll talk about that more too later. As we start to see additional simple assessments, we'll be able to start building a little bit of a better idea of a long-term plan and snapshot of the health of the unit. And as I said, they're typically completed by the assistant, I'm oh, sorry, by an assigned commissioner as part of their monthly contacts. So as we move forward, the detailed assessment is the second of these two, and we're going to break that into two different types also. There's the intermediate and a collaborative. Uh, so the next step of now what is to be sure that we understand the difference between these two methods of evaluating a unit health. Both are versions of the detailed assessment, but they're done with different people. A collaborative assessment is completed when the unit and the commissioner work together to complete a detailed assessment together, of course, in a collaborative manner. An intermediate assessment is done only with the unit commissioner alone, and that's where they complete the detailed assessment without the input of the unit T3. Typically, a completed collaborative assessment will include, uh, <coughs> excuse me, result in a unit service plan, whereas an intermediate assessment will not because the, the collaborative includes the key three, which is what has, we have to have for the unit service plan. The intermediate does not involve the key three, so we can't create a unit service plan there. But it's very important for the collaborative assessment to be well received and that the unit key three is bought into the process before we just send it to them. Because you have to have the buy-in of the unit key three, and the involvement and engagement of that key three, the collaborative assessment is by far the preferred method. But unfortunately, there may be times when that's just not going to be possible. And that's where we come in with the intermediate assessment. We all know of, unfortunately, that unit, we'll say, that doesn't want to use the resources that we as commissioners might bring them, or in some cases have anything to do with what we kind of hear as those district people wanting us to do more work about things they don't know about. So in this case, it might actually be counterproductive to force a unit key three to participate in a collaborative assessment and strain what might already be a poor relationship. So the commissioner can still complete the same set of questions as the co collaborative assessment. They're just doing it alone. The commissioner team can still use this information um, try to help a unit and build a plan, but they're just not going to be able to involve that unit key three. This is also only a stop gap measure until a satisfactory relationship is built with a key three to complete a collaborative assessment. So Rick? Uh, uh, yeah, let's give Bob a chance to swallow and uh, catch a drink of water for uh, lubricating his throat so he can continue to talk. So, you know, another next thought what's next thought is how to engage a unit's key three. This can occasionally be a challenging situation. Much of our effectiveness as a commissioner is based on that relationship that we built and continue to build with our units. And the key three is in particular an important aspect there. Now it's perhaps a good foundation to lay with the unit key three is to let them see that you have some of the same interests in scouting as they do, ultimately to help their youth. The old expression that actions speak louder than words absolutely applies in this instance. If you attend their meetings, communicate effectively, bring good information to them, dress appropriately, and are sincere in offering your help, then it is much easier for them to welcome your thoughts and comments. Think about how you personally go through the steps of accepting a person's inputs and thoughts. It's no different for the unit, except that there will be three of them for you to gain the respect of. The concept of a unit key three, though, is still foreign to many units. You might need to start with just working more closely with one member of the key three, and as your relationship is solidified, work with the other members of the key three as the opportunity presents itself. 
hopefully everybody here knows that the key three is the unit leader, the com uh, unit committee chair, and the COR from a unit perspective. Now put yourself in the place of that key three. How would you react to a message received via email out of the blue that asks you to do more work about something you don't even understand from somebody you may not know? Well, that's what can happen if you set up a future collaborative assessment without doing your homework in advance. A plan for success would not be to send out an email notification and then contact them later. Rather, it would be just the opposite. Discuss it, and once they're open to the idea, then send them that invitation for that future collaborative assessment and generate that email. When beginning the discussion of a collaborative assessment, you're going to need to be careful and pay attention to the attitudes of the key three as you present the concept. Just as it's wise to help a commissioner understand the value of their service and impact that they can have, the unit key three will usually respond favorably if you're able to explain what's in it for me. To help you with that understanding, there's a video that a commissioner can use to help a unit key three understand the benefits of the collaborative assessment. And that's another one of those things that Bob's created for you. Every situation is different, and there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. You're in charge. This is also a good opportunity for an ADC or a DC to be very helpful with coaching and mentoring their commissioners and teaching them how to proceed here. So, Bob, can you tell us a little bit more about the unit service plan? I just bet I can. So a unit service plan is a very specific, customized, in-depth action plan that can address a unit's strengths and needs and is created by using the findings of the collaborative assessment that we talked about. So we've already built the relationship with the unit key three so they understand the value of it. So now we're able to start kind of uh, uh, utilizing that, that relationship. Uh, this identification of strengths and needs is where the unit service plan starts. There are a number of videos that you can use to assist your champions to go about the business of training your commissioners about the impact and value of a unit service plan. I, I believe there's seven specifically about the unit service plan. While every unit is different and there will be varying degrees of success, it's a good thought to be careful when creating the very first unit service plan. Nothing can kill progress, future progress, like an initial goal that is overly ambitious or realistically can't be achieved. It frequently is a good idea to start with a plan that is achievable and then work towards more lofty goals as comfort and confidence in the process grow. Best practices show us that it's best to not create more than three to four major goals to achieve during a six-month cycle with a unit service plan. An important point to remember is that the unit service plan helps us develop a very focused and targeted plan for the future of the unit while JTE measures what has already been achieved. So <clears throat> once we have the unit service plan created, what do we do? So like the previous what's next thoughts, we can also fall into this category with this. Much like any plan that's effective for it to do anything, it needs to be put into action if there's any hope of making improvements. A great plan that's left sitting on the shelf does nothing. The detailed assessment can identify a timeline for completion as well as the accountability of who is to complete what task that has already been identified. <clears throat> Excuse me. As the plan is implemented and a commissioner is in contact with the unit, the simple assessment comes into play. The simple assessment provides frequent checkups on the progress of any new information or actions that may be needed. Once the needs that were identified in the unit service plan have been addressed and progress is starting to be made towards those goals, it may be time to consider scheduling another collaborative assessment. Let's keep in mind that the standard for updating unit service plans is every six months when there's a change in unit leadership or more frequently as the situation dictates. Rick, tell us something oh, about reports. All right, well, this is a good opportunity to talk about now what. Currently, there are 14 reports available, and more are always being developed. Within the Commissioner Tool Focus Group, we have a subgroup dedicated to listening in to feedback and future enhancements that have been suggested. 
reports are a frequent topic of discussion as well as how to improve them. With the old UVTS system, all we could do was enter data, and if we wanted anything back, we had a lot of massaging to do with a complete data dump. Even after the extra work, we really couldn't pull out much usable information and certainly nothing like what we now have available. I'm going to give you a brief description of each of those reports that are out there right now. And for your benefit, I went and tested tonight, just before this call, about two hours ago, with terrible bandwidth. I'm getting terrible bandwidth at my house, less than one MIP. And I was able to open each one of these 14 reports for an entire council. So assigned expired unit reports, it displays a list of all expired units that are currently assigned to a commissioner. There's a key caveat there. So if you haven't assigned a commissioner to that unit, it's not going to show there. Assigned units displays a list of all unassigned units. Those are units where you haven't given a commissioner. Commissioner activity, whether 2014 or 15, shows the number of assigned contacts that have been made monthly by commissioners registered at the district or council level. Now, it's important to appreciate here that our developers misunderstood our requirement here. This report currently only displays contacts made by commissioners assigned to the unit. So that means if a commissioner that stopped in as a guest made a contact and logged it, or if there's nobody assigned to that unit, it's not going to display in this commissioner activity report. Uh, this does not affect JTE counting. Okay? We do have an enhancement in development to include other types of contacts in the count and get that segregated, but the developers misunderstood this initially. Our commissioner contact stats for 2014 or 2015 displays the number of contacts made monthly by each commissioner registered at the district council level. Contacts are broken into two buckets, signed and additional contacts. That's a contact made for a unit that they're not assigned to. The total number of assigned unit contacts and the percentage of assigned unit contacts is also displayed. Additional contacts are not included in the subtotals. However, they are included in the yearly totals and may be calculated manually once the report's exported. Commissioner recruitment displays a list of all possible unit commissioner candidates entered in the detailed assessment. It's not filtered by date. And as a reminder, you enter the data for that in a detailed assessment. District contact stats, 2014 and 15, displays the number of contacts made monthly for a unit, either at the district or council level. Only units within the selected district or council are going to appear. The priority needs units displays a list of all priority needs identified in the detailed assessment. And again, it's not filtered by date. Unassigned expired units displays a list of all unassigned expired units. Pretty self-explanatory. Unassigned units displays a list of all unassigned units. And the two uh, most recently added ones are our unit health reports for 2014 and 15. And this, I think, is one of the most helpful reports, especially for roundtable commissioners, because this report not only shows the units, it also shows whether it's a new unit and when it was initially chartered, if so. It also shows when was the last assessment made, by who, along with the assessment type, simple or detailed, plus the score. It also shows roundtable attendance and how many leaders from each unit was in attendance month of the year. So as you can see from the variety of information available, there is a lot you can do with these reports. Some council commissioners are actually using exports of the data from commissioner tools to create very interesting and insightful reports and graphs using Excel pivot tables. And we've already shared some of those with the president of the firm doing our development as examples of automated reports we desire. The options are nearly endless. And we could devote an entire hour to this alone. I will caution you, if you have a very large council, some of them are very large, it may take a bit of time to download the report that you want, sometimes upwards of five to 10 minutes. Um, it's possible data and connections may time out. So if that happens, you may want to step down to a service area within your council or even a district. The takeaway from this is that there are many new things available in the report section as well as the training manager and the member manager drop downs on the main page of Mike.scouting. So how do you keep up with all the changes that are going on in Commissioner Tools and beyond? I would suggest that you join and occasionally look at social media. 
Facebook, LinkedIn, Yahoo groups. Bi-weekly, the Commissioner Tools Focus Group sends out a summary status report to area commissioners and council commissioners and council commissioner tools champions. These are also archived on the Commissioner Tools website, which hopefully you've got this one uh, right at the tip of your fingers. It's www.scouting.org, and then you go slash scout source slash commissioners, and then if you either navigate down the left-hand side or type it into the URL line, it's tools.aspx. Now, I will ask, if you're a council commissioner or council commissioner tools champion, please share those summary status reports with your commissioners. You would be surprised how many commissioners comment on social media sites that their council commissioners and council commissioner tools champions are not sharing information at all or are not doing it in a timely fashion. Okay, Bob, over to you. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's have a recap then of some of our what now points and then let's go ahead and add in a few others. If Rick, you'll go ahead, there we go. Uh, so if you, very important here, the first one is if you have not already done so, recruit an engaged, uh, underlined engaged council champion. This is going to be your point of contact for the council when your units have issues, or sorry, when your commissioners have issues, this is the go-to person. They'll also be that cheerleader, you might say. We've seen already that the councils that have a good, engaged council champion are having high use of commissioner tools, and what high use equates to is good unit service coming from the use of the system. So. I put an asterisk by that, that that is one of our best practices for you. Uh, the, another one of our what now is be sure that you're training all of your commissioners, not just about the mechanics of how to enter the information. That's really pretty straightforward. But what you're training them about is about the benefits and the values of commissioner tools. We want to move away from looking like we're bean counters. And the way to do that is to understand these values and benefits very well. well. Educate them about the what's in it for me initially as well as beyond the basics. And this is going to get them and hopefully you to buy into the process more. Again, moving away from looking like all we're doing is making reports and checking boxes. You want to be sure that you're getting those units assigned to the commissioners so that we're able to know how many commissioners we need to recruit, what commissioners should be working on what, and what, cert, what units are going to need a little assistance where there may be some gaps in coverage. This next one is going to be a very, very, very important one. Build those key three relationships. Extremely important. This is another critical step for success, another best practice for sure. We can't really do a collaborative assessment without that connection and the building of that relationship with the key three. We don't want to destroy it by sending out random collaborative assessment requests without that effective relationship. So very important to get that built. Then the next part of it is after we have that, we need to benefit from it and utilize it by scheduling. Be sure we're scheduling those assessments, those collaborative assessments, and in turn, we're creating the unit service plan. The unit service plan is where we actually start to deliver what we say we're going to do better unit service. And then remember that sometimes we can't always necessarily do a collaborative assessment, and that's where we fall to the stopgap measure of utilizing the intermediate assessments. And then once the units uh, uh, are getting these collaborative assessments done and the unit service plans are created, we may have gaps where some of them are not getting taken care of. And since this is, again, how we provide that unit service, we want to be sure that we're paying attention to the units that aren't having those unit service plans created for them. Another thought would be through the simple assessments that we want to be sure we're monitoring the units that have had those simple assessments, I'm sorry, that have had the service plans created. Remember that the simple assessment supports the process of going about the unit service plans implementation and how those things are taking place with that accountability of who's doing what and what the timeline is. That's where the key component of the simple assessment comes in. Another big point that Rick just talked about a moment ago is those reports. 
Right now we can monitor and track the information. With the information we, are, we have a whole new set of muscle to help us be better. So currently, like you said, there are 14, but they're continually being looked at and revised, updated and added as the need comes about. Um, uh, another point would be that we want to be sure that we're repeating these collaborative detailed assessments semi-annually or more often if necessary. As much as anything, part of what we need to do is establish expectations for usage and coach our commissioners. If we're not telling them that we expect them to do it and at what time frame, there's a very real chance that it's not going to happen. We've all seen that before. So we, we know it. It's just something we need to be aware of enough to be sure we're establishing that. This is another one of those big asterisk points and a, definitely a best practice to establish those. Then uh, as we do this, we want to be sure we're establishing the plan with the timelines of accountability for what you would like your commissioners to accomplish and by when you would like them to do that. And perhaps uh, this is kind of uh, putting the bow on all of it is we want to be sure we're working to change the culture and commissioning so that everybody is on board with wanting to improve outstanding unit service. So Rick, tell us a little bit about our resources here. Thanks, Bob. So I've got a list there of about nine items, eight or nine items, and uh, we're going to give you a couple more slides with uh, email addresses, phone numbers, and URLs for websites, so don't uh, worry about writing those down. But the resources you have are numerous. Obviously, working with other commissioners, those that are perhaps a little more experienced and knowledgeable, especially with commissioner tools, would include their champions, whether they're council or district area champions. Uh, work with your commissioners uh, through your commissioner chain up to your area commissioner. Um, we also have the web page, Commissioner Tools. Um, has an email address called commissioner tools at scouting.org. And uh, again, the website is www.scouting.org slash scout source slash commissioner slash tools dot ASPX. And again, I'll post that up there in a minute or two. We have over 32 videos that are posted online with over 20,000 views. So obviously, a few people thought it was worth sharing. There are eight documents and PowerPoints. We send out those biweekly summary, stat summary status reports, which I told you are posted on the website. Uh, there are copies of blank assessment forms for all programs. I mean, okay, maybe I don't have a computer. That's not a reason not to use Commissioner Tools. Have somebody print off a blank assessment, go fill it out, give it to somebody that does have a computer and get that thing logged in there. There are assessment exercises to practice before we work on a unit. We've got the Commissioner Tools sandbox. There are uh, help manual buttons in the lower right-hand corner of the pages, and of course the Commissioner Tools system itself. So there are those email addresses that are important to you. Uh, we'll leave them up there for a minute or two. Uh, that way if you want to write some of this stuff down. And um, I hope that um, while you're doing that, if you're not writing them down and you're thinking of questions, you're getting ready to send those questions. As Bob promised, we were going to leave uh, the last part of this for Q&A. So uh, we'll come back to these slides if there's a need to do it. I think we've given enough time for you to write that down. Now, I will make a note. If you've got a Commissioner Tools specific item, send that email to Commissioner Tools at scouting.org. But if you have a systemic issue, like the system is slow or why does this happen and it's not related specifically and exclusively to Commissioner Tools, that probably should go to mystsupport at scouting.org. And questions. What do we do if you've got questions? We're ready here, okay? So there are websites, again, Commissioner Tools email. We actually just opened up a new email that you're welcome to use. If you discover the best practice you'd like us to be aware of and to share, uh, send it to commissioner.support at scouting.org. Uh, and then like most commissioners, Bob and myself, we make ourselves personally available. And there are our emails as well as the official Facebook page for the commissioners of the Boy Scouts. Um, there are a few other Facebook pages that are uh, really more available for things such as dialogues and those sorts of things. Um, haven't listed those here for us. So with that, we have completed 
the uh, PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to go out of presentation mode and see uh, what we've got for questions here. So, uh, well, I have one here. Yeah. Uh, the question is, is there a way to share the various Excel reports that others have made, especially the fancy ones with pivot tables? Well, I think, uh, Rick, correct me if I get any of this wrong, but once you've figured out which report you like and you go to the bottom of that page and you export it or download it as a C, is it CSV? It's CSV, yeah, uh, report. Uh, you can then save it in in your onto your computer, and at that point you can share those with anybody that that you see the fit see the need to. Um, the, Bob, the, yes, I, I think there may be a, a deeper aspect to that question. Perhaps the individual is asking, and they can confirm this, if we could share any of the reports that have been made. So. I've got one in particular that I'm thinking of right now. Uh, if you want to send me an email, uh, I will send you the report that was made by uh, one of your fellow council commissioners, and you'll see the raw data that was downloaded, the multiple tabs that were created, and the pivot tables. And this council has 20-some-odd districts, so we did a nice graphical display. And you can very quickly see which districts are performing and which districts are not. Yeah, he so did come back and clarify. He did come back and clarify what you just said. Also, as a bit of okay. a side note, the group that develops all the training uh, is about to be uh, embarking on creating a video about how to use pivot tables and create pivot tables. And a large part of the content for that, though, may very well be just what uh, we let uh, we we show what others have already done, such as Microsoft. You might say the, the wheel is round and we're not going to be able to improve on it a whole lot. So realize there's already a lot of information out there and Google is your friend or whatever kind of uh, search engine you want to use. So uh, you can create pivot tables with that. I don't have any other questions at this time. So anybody that's holding any questions back, now's the time. We're not going to just keep sitting here and stalling. So we will be uh, signing off as soon as we've figured out there are no more questions, though. If uh, you're struggling to get a, information to us, like you don't have how to do the notes or something, raise your hand. There's a way to do that. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, there's a, uh, a icon, if yours looks like mine, that says raise hand. And actually, there's several other choices you can choose, such as uh, a happy face or a thumbs up or thumbs down, go fast or go slow. So if you're having difficulty communicating with us, or if you really think, hey, i got to tell you this is too hard to type out, uh, do something. We'll unmute you even and uh, let, let you go from there. But uh, we're here for you when we want to not lose that opportunity. Rick, we have a question about can you show us the roundtable tab in Commissioner Tools? We probably we can probably tell you where it is just fine, but uh, it can get a little complicated sometimes switching off and on between different systems and whatnot, and uh, it tends to wreak havoc with us. But the location of the roundtable tab is if you go to the the drill down from the district to the I'm sorry the council to the district screen, look up at the top there will be four tabs. One of those will be roundtable, and click on that. So that will show you where the roundtable tab is. Uh, Margot asked, will this recorded webinar be made available? The plan is for it to be available, yes. We just have to make sure that it downloads properly. We sit back and listen to it and make sure everything's good with it. Uh, jumping back to Matt, are there plans to have some of the information presented in graphs at a glance, like the training charts show in Training Manager? Um, Rick, that's kind of a subgroup two question I'm not real familiar with, but um, it probably is something that at some point we're, we'll be uh, trying to get onto that main page. There's just so much real estate on there that's uh, available and already used with other things. So uh, if we can get it, we will. Yeah, to that last question, Bob, um, that one pivot table that we described, uh, that has graphics in it. Um, you're looking right now, if this is being displayed, uh, I'm going into Commission Tools so I can show people where roundtables are. Um, but we had initially designed, but we were unable to get into release one, that we would have what they call a, um, a widget 
that showed uh, graphical displays up at the top that would include at the unit level things like when um, contacts were made and when they attended roundtables and those sorts of things. Um, so what I'm doing right now is somebody want to know, well, how do I get to go and do a uh, roundtable tab? I'm going quickly into a small council in the Northeast region, and I apologize, it's a little slow because um, um, that's not a good district. Um, a little slow because I'm sharing my bandwidth over the telephone with what I'm doing here right now. So I am in the Diamond Rock district, and then up at the top, you'll see those four tabs. The one that was asked about was Roundtable. I would click on Roundtable right there to back me out to the council, so I've got to go now back down and drill down. And then I could make an entry. This is live, so I'm not going to really go do that. Let's go to Diamond Rock. And it looks like they haven't made any entries there, so if anybody knows who that council commissioner is, um, I do. Um, perhaps we'll be making a phone call, but that's where you would make a new roundtable entry just like that. So uh, I saw a hand was raised. Bob, did you have a chance to find out what was on the person's mind? Yeah. Uh, let me make one more point about this roundtable question. As it is the case with almost every other question we can imagine, there is a video about this. So please go to that to the website, and uh, you'll find information about how to make a roundtable entry. It'll show you where all of that is. Um, once you take this one, Rick, how can you get a report showing which units have had detailed assessments? Uh, so I'm going to go back out for a second. We'll do this live. As I said, this is a small um, council. So I'm going to go to Chester County Council. The report that you want is, oh gosh, um, I want to go back over to units. So uh, let me go back to districts. The re uh, report that you want is the unit health report right here. And I'm going to go click on it right now. And hopefully it will come up pretty quick. And uh, when I do that, and this, this is a good example, you're going to get a report that give it a second to load and give it a second to load all the data, especially if you have a lot of information, because you need to scroll down to the bottom of the report to export it. Not my idea of the best place for that button. We're trying to get that moved so it's at the top. But when you um, export it, you're then able to manipulate the columns. Now, Bob, confirm you can see the columns for me. Yep, it's there. Great. So as I scroll across, what happens with the raw report output, I'm missing the information here on this. I don't know what this means. Round table what? Round table. Well, it turns out the text wrap uh, doesn't wrap in the raw report, but when you export it, it will. And you'll see that this is indicating uh, how many people were in attendance at some of these roundtables. And um, getting a lot of zeros there, boy. Um, Looks like they're not using roundtable uh, function. Yeah, I would, I would tend to say that. Um, Let's see if we can go over to the end. Did I pick the right year, by the way? Maybe I picked last year or something. It was 2015. Uh, no. At any rate, uh, that should be telling us uh, roundtable attendance in these various reports here. Okay, so that's the report that the person was asking for. Um, now, I see a question that came up to myself about what involvement do we anticipate from our council professionals to use commissioner tools? That's up to your commissioner tools. Uh, your commissioner team and your professionals. Uh, some councils have very, very few uh, commissioners, and because we have a similar uh, mission to provide unit service, it's totally appropriate for professionals to make as many entries as they want or have the time into commissioner tools. Cautionary note, though, those contacts will not satisfy your JTE requirements. The JTE team made it very clear to us that that type of um, uh, contact would not be acceptable from a JTE perspective. Have we got any other questions right now, Bob? Yeah, I have a couple here. Uh, one is, are we able to send emails to individual commissioners directly out of commissioner tools? And uh, that is something that's being worked on, but at this particular point, it's not an option that, that we have. It, 
it would be great. We talked about that many times at our our weekly task force meetings, and it's something that'll be uh, at some future point probably part of the system. Um, I have another question. Is there a way to tell whether a detailed assessment is an intermediate or collaborative? If you go into the specific unit and it shows where it's a detailed assessment, you can click into it and see if there's input only from the commissioner. But I don't believe it specifies or breaks that out on a, uh, reports, a report anywhere, does it, Rick? I'm sorry, repeat that one time. I was trying to pull up one of those pivot table reports that people could see. Okay. I don't believe that any of our reports show whether a detailed assessment was collaborative or intermediate. That's correct. Okay. So what I am going to do, um, what I can do right now, uh, I had a moment here, is I'm going to pull, show you uh, one of those pivot table created reports from Excel. And uh, this is what I was specifically talking about. Um, this is, let's see, where's the um, raw data? That looks like that's the raw data. All right, so you can see here, um, this is the raw data, and it goes on and on and on, way down to about uh, 1,500 and some odd lines. Um, in creating a pivot table, um, got this type of information. The council commissioner then created a contact summary table and then uh, sorted that information for their various uh, districts. It has a total number of contacts, how many units had contacts in excess of equal to or in excess of four, how many had met their JTE um, threshold by that point in time, how many units had no contacts, and the percentage of units with no contacts. And then, um, if you can see this, uh, it's a rather wide uh, graph, created this graph that uh, very pointedly uh, makes the point that the council commissioner could take to a cabinet meeting of, okay, folks, so uh, that long, high blue bar in uh, Goose Creek Council, there's a large number of um, total contacts. They're doing great. Um, this dark blue over here, though, that's uh, very high as well, that's no contacts, and that district uh, is not doing so hot. So uh, you can uh, see some of the examples that um, they may here in a specific set of pivot tables and uh, tabular approach there. And we sent this off to the developers said, this is the type of stuff that's really powerful for a council commissioner. All right, Rick, if you can, uh, we're about up on the hour, so if you can put that last slide up again with all of our, our contact info. Um, uh, we've had uh, a time here. We've, I haven't gotten any more questions, and we're about at the end. So uh, if you don't have anything else, Rick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just close out with remind everybody, please be sure you're providing feedback to your area commissioners and your council commissioners, your council champions, back to commissioner tools at scouting.org. That website is shown, I'm sorry, that email is shown there on the screen now. If you're not sure of why something is the way it is, we need you to please ask. The system is only as good as you help us make it. We need to hear your questions and concerns so that we can provide better resources. The Commissioner Tools team Bob, is here to, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Well, I, I was going to thank you. I, oh. I wanted to thank you for all the hard work you've put in, not only for this effort tonight, which is actually quite a lot, but also all along, uh, you're a tremendous asset, and uh, the commissioners of the central region are blessed to have somebody in the central region as committed and dedicated as you are. And uh, I, I want to thank you for spending just an hour today on scouting with us. Yeah, just an hour. Well, thank you very much. And uh, actually, the same thing goes to you. Rick has been the head of the task force developing commissioner tools, and he's put an incredible amount of work into this. He's not from the central region, so he's doing this as a little extra work. So I want to thank him. I want to thank everybody that's here tonight. Uh, do what you can. Use Commissioner Tools. It's going to help you be better commissioners. So, everybody, thank you for coming and everything you do for scouting. Good night. And with that, folks, I'm going to turn off the recording. Good night. <laughs>